I'm going to be okay and hopefully I have all of your I have answers to all of your questions if not I have a, uh, this a lovely array of uh, team members that can help okay, um, answer them. we want to ask you about the comments made by the cancer camp so you want to lead with that all that exciting stuff we have going on you want to lead with that yes we do <laughs> <laughs> yes we do um, and we want to ask you about you know obviously it's caused some controversy saying that you know it, Brown's main, you're, the person you endorse main, his main you know, asset is his race, and that he's going to use that to make a campaign about race. So I'm going to get your response to it. I'll say I, I heard the, con the, the comments, um, and I'm not sure if I heard them in the full context, uh, to the extent uh, that uh, the Attorney General has introduced race in a way that I don't think really belongs in the, the governor's race is disappointing. But as I said, I didn't hear the full, you know, the full recording. So I'm, I am basing this only on a little snippet, which I'm loath to do. I don't, you know, I, I don't like to make a judgment without it having uh, context. Um, but, you know, there, um, you know, out of the, the, the 20 reasons why I support the LG, um, you don't get to black on that in the top 20. You know, he's, there are a lot of reasons to support the attorney gen general. I mean, the lieutenant go governor, sorry. Um, Mayor, the uh, housing uh, authority announced they're paying some of the, uh, or several million dollars for the uh, lead paint judgments. Mm -hmm. um, why, why the change in, in, in your perspective I don't, from the past state? Yeah, I don't believe at all it's a change. Uh, our housing commissioner is here. You know, there was never a refusal uh, to pay judgments. Um, we spent a lot of time looking for a, a sort of a universal solution to all of the outstanding um, cases that, um, you know, the, the old cases that we had, the active cases. Uh, we did just receive an approval letter uh, dated the August 7th, uh, you know, about the, our ability to deal with the, most of the outstanding new um, the the outstanding cases under appeal, and I know that commissioner can speak more specifically to that. Yeah, but there was never a refusal. Yeah, Th thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, yes, I want to be clear. We never refused to pay these judgments. What I always made very very clear was I was not authorized to pay, um, and the mayor couldn't authorize me. This was a housing authority issue. Um, the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development was the only entity that could authorize payment. They gave us a letter of approval on August 7th. We wrote a check, to, well, we actually wrote six checks the next day. So as soon as we got authorization, we made payment. Now, the, the, the intervening time between uh, when the story broke and when we made the payments, there was a lot of back and forth. We were in federal court. We were dealing with HUD. We were looking for um, some, as the mayor uh, discussed, a global solution, something that could not only address the payment of these, on these six judgments, but the several hundred claims that are out there that have not yet been litigated. Um, and unfortunately, we pursued a number of angles. They were not possible. We are now working with HUD to, um, to uh, uh, so they will allow us to set up a self-insurance fund. I want to be clear, though, the money we use to pay uh, for these judgments came out of our budget. There's no money from the city. There's no money from the state. There's no additional money from HUD. And as we set up the self-insurance fund, there will also be no additional funds that will have to come out of our program. So we worked very, very hard to, to get a solution that would be a total solution. Um, but once it's clear we couldn't achieve that total solution, uh, we asked HUD to allow us to pay these claims. We pay them the next day after they approved it. Uh, we're going to continue to work with HUD to at least set up a structure going forward to address these cases in a, in a structured way. Now, that doesn't mean we're going to have a global resolution, but at least there'll be a framework to work with. Uh, Mayor, there's a 260 some million dollar contract approved today. I think there's the Chesapeake Bay cleanup. Mm -hmm. That's a huge contract at one-tenth of the city budget. Um, Double the tip. 
<laughs> you know, so, um, you know, what, what is this money going to, if you were going to be very interested in how, how much money is going to this project? So the, the project is part of Chesapeake Bay Restoration. I think over 90% of the funds that are, uh, will be used in this very large project are flowing through the state. Uh, through uh, stormwater fees, correct? I'm going to get the flush, uh, the flush tax. That's a stormwater fee. That's the same thing. Well, oh, all right. <laughs> Sorry. See, that's why I have him here. All right, I'll start over. So, yes, it's a large amount of money. Uh, yes, it is going uh, for enhanced nutrient removal. Uh, very sexy topic, I'm sure. Uh, but while it's a large amount, and you know. If it were coming from just general funds, it would be a significant part of our budget. But it is uh, over 90% of these uh, funds are coming from the state. And for more specific information, I'll bring up someone who has all of the details and won't uh, mess it up. Sorry. Thank you, sir. Al Fox, Director of Public Work. As the mayor stated, this is under the Chesapeake uh, Bay Restoration Program and is mandated by uh, MDE. Uh, for compliance with that. This project is what we call an enriched nutrient removal uh, uh, project and it's going at our Back River facility. The, as the mayor pointed, 93.5 percent of the funding for this project comes from the flush tax. So the, Not the rain tax. Right. The flush tax. <laughs> the, flush tax. The, the remainder of it is shared between the, uh, the jurisdiction that are serviced by Back River, and that is Baltimore City and Baltimore County. So both of us share 50-50% in, in that. This is a, uh, expected to remove the uh, nutrients out of the uh, uh, wastewater influent that comes into the plant. It's going to uh, increase the 60% uh, removal of nitrogen out of a 60% increase of nitrogen removal from that uh, wastewater and then we're also going to remove phosphorus from it too. So this is the first phase of a two-phase two program. So there's, a, there's some other programs coming out of this. Thank you. Uh, Harbor Point passed the council Monday preliminary approval is the final vote but it's mm -hmm. expected to pass. Um, there's been a lot of public outcry about this project, probably more than than any I can think of in recent memory. Um, you, know, you need a longer memory. <laughs> well, I'm only 33, but yeah. <laughs> the, um, but the, uh, you, do you feel like you've heard the citizens on this issue and that this isn't just being rammed down people's throats? I, I think uh, I've heard, I think the council's heard. Uh, the council president, uh, through his leadership, ensured that there were several opportunities for people to be heard. Uh, I can say that I have not been thrilled. Uh, you know, one of my colleagues has, has heard her say on a radio show, everybody's entitled to their own opinion, but not their, or their own facts. And I think some things, unfortunately, were misconstrued, and when you get when that happens, uh, you know, I think the, the dialogue got muddled. Um, you know, for me, this is about creating jobs, creating jobs for Baltimore City residents. This is about supporting MB and WBE um, firms in the city. It's about uh, creating a diverse tax base for the city, increasing our ability to get uh, taxes on that um, on that property, um, there are a lot of things that are coming to uh, the city. And when you know, yes, it's a project uh, downtown. But when those funds go to the general fund, that 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 goes all over the city to allow us to do uh, to provide the services that people need, not just in that small area, but all throughout the city. So there are a lot of good opportunities that come out of uh, out of this project. Um, and we worked hard to make sure that Baltimore City residents benefit from um, the, the, the project from beginning to end. Um, so I'm, I'm really proud about what we've been able to do in partnership with many communities uh, and many stakeholder groups. Um, you know, I know when you have a project of this size that, you're not, that everybody's not going to be happy about it, but I think everybody will benefit from it. Mayor, in follow-up to that, have you reached out to the GDC and the downtown management group who filed some letters last week 
uh, I believe in the eleventh hour, um, just questioning and maybe offering some kind of amendment or alternative to that large step. Uh, I spoke to uh, the a representative from the management group, not for B, not for GBC. And, and how did that go? What did you say? You know. They had some they had some concerns uh, about the tip itself, but also um, about what they wanted to see in in their area. Uh, and I'm committed to uh, making sure that we have revitalization of our business districts, not just in Harbor East in this in this new area, but uh, in the center business district as well. That's why I uh, instituted a, a study, a group to look at the needs, the uh, the residential needs, the business needs, the occupancy of of the, um, the center, central business district, and out of that came the apartment tax credit that has already spurred development in that area. So I'm very sensitive to their concerns and want to work with them, but I can't hold one project hostage to meet their demands. How about the GDC? Will you be talking with Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to, um, yeah. I got off easy today. I'm going to scoop. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Take care. We were told we had a very limited time. That's never stopped. <laughs>